that is what unlocked this fluid sweep picking motion for me. So that's when it clicked after doing that for a while. All right, my friends, today I would like to talk to you about sweep picking. Aside from showing you some exercises and tricks that unlock this traditional neoclassical sounding sweep picking approach for me, I'm also quite excited to show you the evolution of my sweep picking licks and style. So how I'm actually doing some of the more modern stuff that you can hear and listen to on this channel. Also on my most recent instrumental guitar album Elevation, of course. First of all, this is the very common shape that I started out with. So out of all the different arpeggios, why exactly this one? That was simply the opening arpeggio to a quite iconic section of the coolest and most technical guitar song that everybody wanted to learn back when I started out. Stab Wound by this gentleman over here. Let me know in the comments if you remember this one and if you also gave it a try back then. It was quite a while ago, but I think there was a tap on the 24th fret as well. So if you wanted to be the coolest guy in the entire rehearsal space, you had to be able to play this lick. There are a lot of players out there who just want to learn to sweep because it's hard and it's a great flex. But if you don't have that specific lick, guitar solo or entire piece of music that really motivates you, I think you won't make that much progress because you're just playing the exercises, you don't even enjoy the sound of them. So if you haven't already, make sure to find something that inspires you after watching this video. It's really cool for me to see that a lot of students in the Patreon VIP Facebook group are inspired by the Paganini Caprice that I uploaded it one year ago. So that relatively easy sweep picking section at the beginning is a great start. Of course you should start a little bit slower, but with that one you only have to worry about one sweeping direction basically. You're sweeping upwards and you're only connecting two very common shapes with slides. So that's a great challenge and I'm sure that you can master it with some of the tricks that we will discuss a bit later. If you're an intermediate player, you can also try the next section. That one is a bit harder. goes something like this, I didn't play it in a long while. In case you would like to learn this cool Paganini neoclassical sweeping sections, as always I made tabs, guitar profiles and exercise play along videos, especially for you on Patreon. So don't forget to download them after the lesson so that you finally have some cool sweep picking workouts for your daily routine. Back to my first arpeggio. Sadly, I was a very impatient kid, so I never really sat down with the metronome at the beginning and started very slow. Of course, I wanted to go fast right away, so I actually used this exact arpeggio shape in one of my first songs in the first EP that I recorded in a professional studio, but my sweep picking approach back then was quite sloppy. I will try my best to recreate what I was doing. Yeah, sounds something like that, right? So aside from that idea not exactly being interesting, just moving the same pattern up and down, a semitone, the execution is also very sloppy and it sounds more like a rake. So playing dead notes. So when I listen to this recording nowadays with better trained ears, I can always hear the lowest note of the arpeggio, then a bunch of dead notes, not exactly in time, and then the highest notes of the arpeggio. So I guess the bottom and the high part of the arpeggio were okay already, but in between you have that confusing mess of dead notes, not exactly real note values. So I was kind of cheating my way through the solo. Please don't take this as a good example, but it actually worked. The producer and the other guys told me, wow, that's really cool. It's great that you're sweeping in this guitar solo. But deep down, I always knew that it's just a trick. I couldn't really play any advanced and more interesting patterns. For example, the intermediate Paganini example we just looked at. With all shapes that I learned, it was always kind of like... So you could hear the lowest note, maybe even the hammer on, then a confusing mess of dead notes, then the high note, if I was lucky also the pull off, and then the dead notes again. That doesn't really sound too great. So to move on, at the start I always wondered why I didn't sound like my personal guitar heroes. Whenever they played arpeggios the sound was really smooth, it didn't sound like they were struggling at all, totally fluid. So that's how I wanted to sound, but that's how I sounded. 
So I finally chose to commit to this and to practice slow and to a metronome and here's what made this click for me. I was mostly focusing on simple short bursts of ascending and descending arpeggios and my biggest focus was always exactly lining up the first note with the metronome and the last note as well. So for example one, two, three, four. So special focus on the first, the lowest and the last, the highest note. Of course at the beginning it still sounded something like this. One, two, three, four. So the note on the one was perfectly in place, the note on the four as well and in the middle I would have this confusing mess of dead notes. But by setting these anchors in my brain at the start and ending of the arpeggios, the rest of the notes slowly started to fall into place rhythmically. And I think this simply doesn't happen for players that start out with repeating exercises right away, so super long arpeggio etudes. And the second kind of controversial thing that really helped me out is that I was pushing myself way too hard early on with those sloppy fake arpeggios. <laughs> It actually did have kind of a good side effect to play like this for over a year. I didn't have that very common beginner problem of always attacking the strings individually while I'm playing, like with alternate picking for example. So with a lot of beginner sweepers out there, the picking motion looks like this for quite a while. So attacking all the strings individually with downstrokes and upstrokes because it's simply hardwired into your brain. That's fine if you're playing slow, but if you want to speed it up to this level, it won't be possible anymore with those individual strokes for every string. So this is something I see students struggling with quite frequently, almost every day in our Patreon student VIP Facebook group. In case you want some personal feedback on your picking hand technique or on your fretting hand technique, that's the place to be. But in my case and in retrospect, I have to say I didn't really struggle with this problem a lot because I got used to the relaxed sweeping motion quickly due to the rake or fake arpeggios that I was playing. So for me, it was just a matter of time and patience, really sitting down and getting this tight and clean. So what's your takeaway from this story? Should you also play sloppy, fake arpeggios for a year? Probably not, but a big mistake I keep seeing again and again from students is just focusing on perfection, playing really, really slow. So my personal suggestion for you is keep that focus on perfection and playing slow and in time in your routine. But at the end of your sweep picking routine, really challenge yourself and play way too fast and really sloppy. Nobody is listening to you, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Because I really think that is what unlocked this fluid sweep picking motion for me. So that's when it clicked after doing that for a while. And I really don't think that you can get there by just playing two, three, or four beats per minute faster every day starting from I don't know 20 30 beats per minute and as I promised in the beginning to end this video some more modern approaches and sounds concerning sweep picking what I love to do with my music right now and you can also hear this on my album elevation that you can stream on Spotify the link is in the description is mixing sweep picking with other techniques like alternate picking for example that's not an entirely new concept but by doing this in certain ways you get really cool and modern sounding licks because the traditional shredding approach is always fast alternate picking line sweep picking section and then I don't know pentatonic shred run something like that and by working on licks that quickly combine these different techniques you get very cool and kind of odd sounding results like this one for example <laughs> So that's just a quick example, but although you heard this A minor arpeggio hundreds of times already, it does sound more interesting right away with those quick alternate picking bursts. So that's the last play along exercise I uploaded for you on Patreon. Also make sure to practice this one. And please let me know if you would like to see more practical licks like that, that combine different techniques like sweep picking and alternate picking. I would love to show you some more special things and tricks that I do in my music to hopefully inspire you for your music. But until then, make sure to leave a like in case you enjoyed this sweep picking video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next next one. It would be a shame if you keep missing exercises that would potentially save you years of guitar practice. So click that button right now. You won't regret it. And I will see you again in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye bye.